will probably know uh, that sound waves, uh, this is so random, we're changing topics it so is. quickly tonight, yeah. it just it's seems changeable. ridiculous. But anyway, you probably know uh, that sound waves can do this. <laughs> but you probably didn't know that they're capable of doing this. These are ordinary polystyrene beads. Now, watch very carefully. Abracadabra. Levitation. This isn't some sort of optical illusion. This bead really is suspended in midair. It's not just a single bead. I can position other beads around it and they all stay in place. They're not held there by magic, but by the power of sound. Turn off the source of the sound and all the beads fall. Phil Bassingdale is an engineer from the University of Bristol. We have a speaker at the top and that's playing ultrasound. So this is sound that's too high a frequency for us to hear. That sound is bouncing backwards and forwards between these two reflectors and creating something called a standing wave. And these beads are being trapped in that standing wave. It's odd to think sound alone can have such a physical effect, but it's something many of us have experienced. If you've ever stood close to the speakers at a music concert, you'll have felt the power of sound as it rumbles your insides. And that's because sound can physically affect the objects around it because of the way that it moves. Sound moves through the air as a wave and this spring can show how it travels. If I use this box here, I can tune the frequency of the wave going up the spring so it's exactly in time with the wave that's coming back down. When I flick the spring, a wave travels up, hits the ceiling and travels back down. If I use a machine to get the timing of waves just right, Parts of the spring vibrate madly, while other parts remain motionless. And what you get is you get these areas. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one about here, where the spring doesn't appear to be moving at all. And that's because the wave going up exactly cancels out the wave coming down, and you get these things that are called nodes here. These nodes act as a platform, and it's here that the beads are held in place. This is all fascinating, though not much practical use. But Phil and his colleagues are looking at whether the same technique can solve real-world problems. Phil, tell me, what have we got here? Under my microscope here, I've got a device to trap algae. So these are microscopic organisms that you would find in a pond. And we right. can see those algae on the screen. So this image on the screen is from the camera. We can see our algae floating around. When I turn this device on, we're going to create that standing wave. And as you can see on the screen, the algae are immediately lined up into these clearly defined lines in exactly the same way as the polystyrene beads were levitated. Using this technology, Phil hopes that sound can be used to help purify water. It would allow scientists to separate algae, dirt or bacteria into specific areas and filter them off, leaving clean water behind. So far, this technology is limited to the lab, but scientists and engineers are looking at ways to bring it out into the real world. And while it's early days yet, we're only just beginning to appreciate the power of sound. Well, Phil, from that film, uh, joins us now from Bristol University uh, with news of another way that sound waves can be used and we're going to start uh, with with temperature now how can sound measure heat well quite simply we've got a speaker on one side of this box and a yeah. microphone on the other side so we're playing a sound and we're listening to it and we know the distance between those two so we can calculate the speed 
and temperature is dependent on speed. So as it gets hotter, mm -hmm. the, the sound is going to travel faster. Yeah. So then we can calculate the temperature inside that box. So you can see what temperature is it. I mean, yeah, well, it's fluctuating. It's, it's, it's fluctuating quite a lot, hasn't it? Eddie? So that's the here, exact right? temperature inside this box. And we don't have to have a thermometer. So, yeah, but, well, so why wouldn't you use a the thermometer then? Is this more accurate? So we're taking a direct measurement straight away. And if we were in a chemical reaction cell, we couldn't put a thermometer in because it was too dangerous. We could of use course. sound yep. to measure the temperature. Right. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's move on now to, uh, to wind measurement. Let's go to wind. Right, yeah. so we've got our wind machine, our hairdryer here. From yeah. the makeup room. Oh, yep. yes. <laughs> and so we're sending sound backwards and forwards right. between these two. Okay. And it's like a travelator. So if I was running on a travelator, that travelator being the wind, mm -hmm. I'm going to go faster in one direction than the other direction. What's a okay. travelator? You know, a running machine. Are you getting the, air, uh, the airport to get you places? Oh, it's oh, a travelator. Yeah. That's a travelator. I think so. If you go the wrong way. Oh. Yeah. I've seen gladiators. Walking what? <laughs> yeah. So the sound, floors, you know, floors. the sound goes faster with the wind than it does in the other direction. Uh -huh. yeah. So we can calculate how fast it's going. Have a little look around there, Dave, to see if it's changing. And this machine can measure speeds up to 200 miles an hour. Seven miles an hour. Three miles an hour. And they use them in typhoon yeah. areas because... Well, you know, with, the, with how loud that is, I mean, this is, this is ultrasound, so we can't hear it, yeah? yeah? But if we could, if it was a frequency that we could hear, how loud would that be? I think it'd be about as loud as we're talking to each other okay, now. So not, not, so not no, too so loud not, at all. Not very loud. Um, what about rainfall then? Let's uh, turn rainfall. that off. Off Let's we go to the pad <laughs> Rainfall. Right. So, oh, it's here. been raining in London. We've got a paddling pool full of water, mm -hmm. uh, okay. maybe just raining just here. And we're using a machine here to bounce sound, ultrasound, off the surface of the water. Mm -hmm. yeah. It comes back. And we're measuring the delay, the time that it takes for the sound to go down and come back. And from that, we can calculate the height of the water. I see. So, oh, so this is the distance between the surface and exactly. that little right, monitor. Okay. It's raining a lot, as you can see. And this is quite a new device you've got here, isn't it? So it's in the early stages. Exactly. All right. So this is a brand new one-show weather yeah. forecast. <laughs> we can see it's gone up. We've measured the rain. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sound, sound advice. Right.